And good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Deborah Durr with the NC Chamber and welcome to today's webinar, NC Suits, Modernizing Unemployment Tax Administration for North Carolina's employers. Before we start, there are a few things you should know. Your microphones are on mute to avoid any distractions during today's presentation. Drop your questions in the Q&A box, not the chat box, and if time permits, we will answer them. And finally, you will receive today's recording via email within 24 hours after today's presentation. Our speaker for today is Gina Strickland, who is a tax integrity auditor for the North Carolina Division of Employment Security, where she has been now for 13, or I should say over 13 years. Prior to her current role, she has held various positions in the tax unit, as well as the benefits claims unit. Gina worked in the private sector for 20 years. She received her bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in finance from the University of North Carolina at Pembroke, followed by her master's degree in accounting from Liberty University. Her experience both in and out of state government, plus her understanding of employers' needs, have led her to become an integral depart a part of NC Suits development. Gina? Thank you, Deborah, and welcome everyone. Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here and thank you for giving us your time to learn about NC Suits. So we'll go to the next slide. I want to give you a little bit of background and um, tell you what's going on right now. We are launching NC Suits, which is the North Carolina State Unemployment Tax System. That'll be launching on November the 13th going live. It's going to replace a decades old tax mainframe web service and remote filing system, which is about 30, about 30 years old or so. Um, it's robust, the new system is going to be robust, easy to use. It's a cloud-based solution and system. It addresses the issues that we've heard from employers and agents over the years, some of their concerns. And so we tried to address those issues. It adds on new features and offers a lots of self-service options such as example correspondence. The correspondence that you receive in the mail can also be found in your portals. So those are one of the self-service options that you can always go back and find your um, correspondence have previously been sent to you. Next slide. <clears throat> the benefits of this system, it is modern and streamlined. It's quicker, so much quicker, easier to use and navigate. There's transparency that we try to be transparent, but there's so much more transparency than there was before. For example, you can see where your payments have been applied. You can see those um, yourself without calling and asking. Uh, enhanced online filing experience, real-time updates. Before when updates were made, it would have to process overnight. Now updates are made immediately. Again, more self-service options and it's convenient. Next slide. Um, some of the new features that we have is the ability to report out-of-state wages. I know some employers in the past have gotten excess wage audits because they weren't able to give us the out-of-state wages that they were taking credit for. So now you'll be able to report those and you would it's going to reduce any excess wage audits. You're able to provide multiple contacts. I know this was a big concern when during the pandemic because some people, um, had certain roles within their agencies. So if you needed to talk to us about claims or if you need to talk to us about tax um, filing or if you need to talk to us about tax payments, we can give you, you, you can be set up to have different types of um, roles as far as a contact and what information can be released to you. You can schedule an ACH debit payment. That's a big, big thing that you can go in, schedule this payment. You may file your report early but you can schedule the payment to be posted at the end of the month. We've heard that from many, many employers. You can authorize agent services. In the past, you'd have to sign a remitter form, the agent or the employer would submit that to us, and then we'd attach the agent 
but you can attach agents. Employers can attach agents immediately. You can upload your own POA forms. You don't have to mail those forms. You can submit supplemental and amended reports, and you can submit quarterly reports for a single or multiple employers, and this is a lot with agents, and or multiple quarter filings by data upload. Next. The filing, on your filing reports, we have now three file format, op format options. The new one is the CSV. We have the ICESA and the EFW2. Some in the past had submitted by the DS format, but that's not gonna be accepted any longer. We do have a 25 megabyte size limit for each uploaded file, but that's not to say that you can't file, um, upload more than one file, you can. One of the ch big changes is employee first names are now required. So in the past, you're only required to put the first four of the last name. We're asking you to put the whole last name, but now the first name is required also. Substitute numbers for an employer without a valid social security number. It must begin with a nine. You can't do du duplicates within the quarter. In the past, you, would, you were used to putting all ones. Now it's gonna be nine. So for example, you could do nine, all zeros and end it with the one. If you had another one, you would do it nine, all zeros, and then with the two. And employees can only be listed once. For example, if an employee works in shipping and they work in production, you can't list them twice on the report. You only list them one time and combine those wages. Next. Um, some of the top topics are the login. How do I log in? Well, if you're already logging in with us now, that's not going to change. You're still going to log in through our website and you're going to use your same credentials yeah, and your passwords, your usernames will not change. Your accounts, how the accounts are changed, or we're still going to use the first seven digits of your account number. Sometimes people would use that check digit, what we call the check digit. It was on the far right, but we're dropping that and we're going to use your seven digits and we'll add leading zeros. Your account number will go from seven or eight if you use the check, check digit to 10, starting with the zeros from the left. But you will not need to re-register for a new account number. So that goes for agents also. If agents are on this call, if you're already an agent, you will not have to re-register for uh, an agent ID. And Instead of employer account numbers, we're going to be calling the employer ID numbers. Third quarter filing. The third quarter filing will still be filed in our legacy system. And it is due by the due date of October 31st because NC suits will not go live until November 13th. Now, there will be a blackout period. Um, it's going to start at 7.30 p.m. on November the 9th, which is on a Thursday. We will go live on November 13th. So it will be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that you will not have access to the system, those three full days. And again, it's gonna go live on November 13th. And for you to get more information about NC Suits, also those filing formats, you can go to des.nc.gov forward slash NC Suits. Next topic or next slide. What can you do to prepare now? One thing we've been asking employers to do is go online. Um, if you're not enrolled in online access, please enroll. If you are, update your online access. Check who your administrators are. Check who your users are. If they need to be deleted, if they, it needs to be updated, please do that now. Update your employer account information. If you haven't updated your address and your address has changed, your phone numbers have changed. Any of the information that's currently on your account, you can update that information now. If you have any outstanding NCUI 101s, try to file those up. If you can pay your outstanding debt, you can go online right now, the current RTF system, and see if you owe any debt. Try to pay your debt. Try to take the time to review the new file format specifications. If you have someone or if you use a, a program, or have one, someone that submits, you may want to just take the time and make sure that they um, are aware of the um, file formats. And we have been working on that. 
link any currently unlinked client accounts. So if you're an agent or if you're an employer and you use an agent to submit on your behalf, you want an agent to submit on your behalf or to be able to have access to your account, we'd like for you to go ahead and try to get, go ahead and do that now. And they'd have access when we go live. And again, review and update your cl current client account information. That's for your agents. Next slide. I'm gonna do a live demonstration for you today. Um, just remember it is for training educational purposes only. It doesn't can't contain any personal identifying information and any employer related information has been created for demonstration purposes only. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I want to log in as an employer and go to the employer page. Employers have three options. They can log into their account. They can register. And if they log in, it's actually going to bring them to a page if they're an existing account to go forward to update any information that um, employers may be missing. So this screen that you see right now, just the IDM that we currently have will be your regular login. So it'll look a little bit different when you log in. That's the final steps of development are, um, are being worked on. Now, what I've done is I've logged in to the uh, an employer home screen. When employers log in after they've registered with us or after, when they log in, if they are already existing employer, this is the employer home screen. And I'm just going to go over this just a little bit um, so you can get familiar with this screen. On the left top, you will see your employer ID. That is where your employer ID will be listed. You will see the employer name and what type of business entity type, meaning is it a governmental, is it a general, agricultural, nonprofit, 501c3, Indian tribe. Those are types of business entity types you will see. Underneath that, you have alerts and messages. And it also in the alerts and messages, you have an inbox for um, mail items and you have action items. If you click the inbox, it's going to show you any read or unread messages that you need to read. If you click on a hyperlink for a message, it will open it up and once you close it, that message will then move down to the bottom section to read messages. Okay. At the very top of the screen, you have the username, and that is where you can log out. You have a print button. You have a previous arrow, which will take you to the previous screen you were on. And you also have a home button, which will take you to the home screen. The main portion of the home screen, the largest portion, lists unread messages here also to the to the right of the options and alerts. And you can click on those from there. The middle section has employer information, has your federal ID number, employer ID, business name, DBA name, whether your account's active, inactive, canceled, what type of employer reporting type are you, your current tax rate, your liability date, 
employment type and your business type. There are some hyperlinks and we'll talk about those in a moment. To the far right, you have wages, filing and payment. You can see right here if you have any outstanding reports or payments that are due for a particular quarter. It, if you look, you can see on the second, uh, fourth quarter of 2022, the circle with the slash through it means someone's not liable. First quarter 2023, you have no action. That means it's been filed and paid. An X, which is on second quarter 2023, is an X. That means it's past due. And on the third quarter 2023, it shows an exclamation point. And that means a due date is approaching. Your due dates are also listed to the very right of each quarter. So it takes into consideration when there's a holiday um, or a due, and a due date is on a holiday or a weekend. And those are built in. So we actually give you the due dates. At the bottom of the screen has a total of any unpaid taxes, amount due, interest or penalty. You can see any quarterly benefit charges. And then we have some quick actions and we'll talk about those in a few minutes. On the far left where it says your options, if you click my account, that takes you to the home screen. Wage submission is where you can file your reports. Wage and debt summary is where you can see a, a synopsis of those. And payments is where you can make a payment. Account management, maintenance, I'm sorry, is where you can make change, make changes. And we'll look at that in just a few minutes. Documents and emails, that's where you can go and see correspondence. Collections, those are collection items, your tax rate, reports, and inquiry if you need to ask something. So on the home page, I wanted to go over account status. And if you click on the hyperlink, it'll show you the status, any previous status, the effective begin date, if there is a reason for a change, who did it, and um, when it was done. And where, if you look right here, these are called breadcrumbs. And I can hit the X and it'll take me back to the previous page also. There's also a little line that says navigator. You can open that up and it'll take you to different places. The other hyperlink I want to show you on the front page is as a tax rate. You can click that hyperlink for the tax rate and it will show you the tax rate years, the begin dates, the end dates, and what the rate was. One of the quick actions I want to show you that I think is really important um, are change address and phone number, change communication preference, but the most important one will be agent assignment. If I click on agent assignment, I can actually add an agent that can maintain file reports or do other things on my behalf. So if I want to add agent, again, I'm going to go back to the home screen. You can click on agent assignment, add your agent. Your agent will have their agent ID. So if you'll just get your agent ID from your agent or your accountant, CPA, whoever's going to represent you on filing and pa making payments. And then you enter their number and hit search. You can see that you'll get your agent um, will be brought up their name. Just verify their name that that's the right person. And you can do one of two things. Now, agent authorization is going to be immediate. If you're requesting they be a power of attorney, there is a form and um, the form will be available and it has to be completed and you'll have to upload and I'll click power of attorney just to show that there will be an upload that will need to be done. And once you submit a power of attorney, that will be have, have a workflow that will have to be processed and reviewed by staff. But if you're just doing an agent authorization, what we currently call remitter, because that's changing. They're called agents now. You will be able to go in and select the roles that you want them to represent you. 
or handle on your behalf. And you can put, put a beginning date, you can put an end date, you can leave that end date open. I have to put the beginning date, I'm sorry. And if you can see, once I hit save, it shows that agent and their status and what type of authorization. It'll show whether it's an agent or a POA once it's, a, it's approved. And again, agent authorization approves immediately. Their begin date. And if you didn't put in an end date, there will be no end date. And what type of role. Now, we have account maintenance. If you go to account maintenance, that's going to be an area that you'll probably enter quite a bit. We also have agent assignment at the very top. You can go there and it takes you to the same place we were before. There's several things that you can do. You can change your business name. If you, for some reason, you typed in your federal ID number wrong, you need to update it, you can do that you can do employer maintenance. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. Now, as far as employer maintenance, when you're registering, you'll be able to add a physical, legal and mailing address. However, you can add other ad addresses. To see a current address, you can click the hyperlink and you can make any changes you need to and hit save. But if you want to make that address the same as some of these others, you don't have to retype it. If I want to say, yes, this is a same address as where I want my rate notices to go, then you can hit save. And then your rate notices will also go to that same address. But if you want to add a different address, you can hit add and you can go in and type a different address. So you have, in the once you set up an account, you have mail, physical, legal, owner, bankruptcy, court, or trustee, claims, rate notice, reimbursement statement, and billing addresses that you can have for different addresses. We'll look at the next tab, and that's a contact summary. If you want to, you can click on the hyperlink. It'll show you the information of the current contact summary, and you can update it. And then if you want to, to you can hit save, and it'll change whatever you need to change. So if I wanted to add an alternate phone number, let's say I wanted to add a sale number, I could add that, hit save. And you do have to confirm the email address every time. And I didn't type. And it will give you an error if you don't if there's something that's required and it's missing or something doesn't match that's supposed to be matched, it will give you an error. So you can always add a new contact. Your original contact when you register or the one that's converted over is gonna be your primary contact, but you have contact, different contact types, accounting, benefits, few to cert, certification, human resources, legal, other, payroll, registration, and succession. And then you would choose one of those, fill in the information and hit save and it will save that information. And you can always see a history of what you've done to a contact. Once you've made a change, you can see a history and click the hyperlink and it'll show you what had been modified. And without even going into the contact summary, you can see a lot of the information right there from that screen. Location summary, you can add locations. 
So if you have different locations, you can add the name and um, put in addi additional locations. But you can also click on the hyperlink and change something and hit save. And you can click the history and it'll show you the history of that location. Your next code. Click your next code ID and see all the information about your next code. Ownership summary. You can edit your ownership owners. Communication preferences. Everything when when you register, you can choose US mail, email, or text. However, when you're being converted over, it'll automatically be US mail. And you can change these addresses, communication methods or preferences. And then you can see a history of what's happened to your account. You can see where I've down near the bottom, I filed a report. You can see where I updated the location, updated the contact changes. So those are, you can see everything that's happened to your account. Now I'm just gonna show you where you file wages. You can go to wage submission and you can hit submit wages. And this is where you can choose to file an original, amended or supplemental report. If you choose original, the only thing that's going to be populated in the drop down box will be the quarters in which there is no report filed that is currently due. If you choose amendment, it's only gonna populate quarters in which an amendment is available and quarters have already been filed. And supplement will only show quarters that have already been filed. So you can upload a file, you can do a manual entry, you can copy employee information from a previous quarter's filing, or you can file a no wage report if you had no wages reported. I'm going to say to copy, and you can choose what quarter you want to copy from. Next. Sorry. Now, if you can see, it has carried over the information that I had put in the previous quarter. You can add and delete someone that's already there. I'm going to go across. You have social security number, last name, first name. Those are required. Middle initial is not. Your gross wages, those are required. Out-of-state wages, that is only for someone that had out-of-state wages that are reportable and you're getting credit for. And then the out-of-state code will allow you to choose what state they had worked in. Hours worked, that is something that you can use um, for your benefit but it's not a required field. So I'm gonna put in $500. Well, and then the next is the question asks, how many employees did you have each month? So I'm gonna put one. 
And you also have a choice to choose whether somebody's an employee or an officer. That so um that one pre-populates also. You have if you want to keep up where someone works and you have your location set up, you can choose the locations. It de will default on this to the um if you only have one to the one location. And then you have a place for a SOC code, which is also not required. Once I click next, it takes the current submission summary and says this is the amount of total wages. This is the excess. And it, if you notice, there's a big difference. You're not putting the total gross wages anymore. You're not putting the ex any um, excess wages. This calculates for everything. We're just putting in individual wages and it will figure the tax, interest and penalty as what you're used to. Hit next and you can click who's submitting this. Um, if they're already listed for the contact person or you can add another person, you click the submission um, acknowledgement box and hit submit and you filed a report. And then you have a place to submit your payment. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right here. And I'm gonna do it as credit card, but you do have ACH credit, debit, credit card, paper check, and I think we have EFT, e electronic funds transfer. So if I was to do credit and put my 3241, Next, I'm not going to have to put all the information in. I'm just going to hit pay by credit card and hit close. And once we come back to the home screen, if you notice, some of the stuff did move around a little bit. But if you notice, it shows the second quarter 2023 as filed and paid. And what it did is created this because there were two locations listed, employer multiple location. It says a pending action item. So those are action items. And again, you might see it here, but you can also see it to the left. If you click on that, it'll tell you what they want you to do. Now I'm gonna to go to the payments and I'm not going to go through making a payment because I did it the, the way normally we would do is you can make a payment right here and walk through the process. This is where you um, look at refunds, payment confirmation lookups, your payment history, you can look at the history of your payments and you have a lot of choices of what you want to put in. You can put in a tra transaction date from, a postmark date from, minimum, maximum, um, how you made the payment. And that gives you more options over there that it came in paper check, money order, credit card, cashier's check, cash, ACH credit or debit. But if you look, you can see the information about the payment and you can click the hyperlink and it'll give you a little bit more information about how that payment was applied. The interest, late filing penalty, late payment penalty, and the tax. So it gives you a breakdown of how your payment was applied. So this is one of the big things that's really important. You can see your payment, but you can also click on the link and see what, how your payment was applied and where it was applied. And I want to go to the wage debt summary screen and for my employers and even agents, you can see the quarterly calculations for each quarter. There's a drop down box that will let you go to a previous year and you can see 
whether something was an original report, how it was entered. This one was manual, but this other one was copy. Who it was submitted by and when, and the breakdown of the wages and the debt. You can click next tab and it'll show you your debt summary and it'll show you any balance due. Again, you can look here and you can see your payment summary. And if you click the hyperlink, it'll show you again, the breakdown of that payment and where everything was applied. Your transaction history, and I'm just doing search, but because I don't have a lot in here, but you can use the parameters that are available. And it will show you the transaction types and the history. You can go to a report history and, and it shows you again, the report type, who it was submitted by, quarters, status, the break, breakdown of total excess and taxable wages, because again, it totals everything. It calculates the excess and the taxable wages. Any out-of-state reports and how many were reported each month, you can click on view to your right and get a copy of the report. You can click on the confirmation number and it'll show you that information. And that, <clears throat> excuse me. The next is employee details. So on employee details, it gives you a breakdown of all the employees that you reported on certain quarters. And I have it pulled up all of 2023, but if I say what first quarter 2023 and do a search, it will give me just that employee or the employees for a particular quarter. You and you also, if you had to add some or delete something was modified, you can choose that. You want the status, you can choose. There's just different parameters of what you can look look at. <clears throat> I'm gonna to go to documents and emails, your options to the left, and you can see my correspondence and hit search. And it will show you all the correspondence that have been sent, how they were sent, whether delivered or whether it wasn't required because maybe something went to the web portal and you were, it, it's just there for you to view like your registration. When you register an employer, it'll just keep a copy of that registration there for you. It won't mail it. It'll just keep it there for you so you can see. And I know sometimes I've had calls in the past uh, and there were issues and they said, well, I didn't keep a copy of my registration. With NC Suits, you'll have a copy of your registration out there. And again, there's other methods. You know, if you got an email or text history, it's there. My documents, maybe documents that you uploaded because there will be options to upload. For employers that are new and they're registering, maybe they're a 501c3 and they have to provide us with that IRS letter. There's an option in registration for them to upload that information. Again, there's collections. If you want to look, request a waiver. If you want to look in the AR. Again, there's a tax rate. You had the shortcut on the homepage. But you can also come to tax rate and look at your tax rates or do a benefit charge summary um, lookup also. And you have an option, and I don't have that confirmation number, but you have an option to look at reports and you have an option to send an inquiry, request an inquiry. This is a a, a big overview of the employer employer portal. And um, for any agents that are on here, I want to do a uh, quick overview of the agents side also. So I'm gonna log out of here. And again, when you see the login I'm doing right now, remember this is changing. Our integration is gonna be made 
with the current IDM. An agent's portal looks a lot like the employer portal. It's the layout, the home, print, back, username with the log out buttons are in the same area. You still have agent ID in the same place the employer ID name was, the agent name and um, in the same place as the employer name. And then you have the FEIN of the agent here. It, agent also has an inbox and action items. The unread message again are on the main part of the screen. They can see total unpaid taxes and amount due for their clients. They can see information about their employer wage reports, employer payments. And again, they have an area to change quick actions to change address, phone number, communication preferences, maintain the POA. <clears throat> now, if I go in and I see account maintenance, because they have some of the same options, I want to show the employer. I click on maintain authorization. And if you look, when I hit maintain authorization, this is from the agent's point of view. It shows the employer that we added earlier. So again, I told you that things are now done real time. You can see when that employer added the agent, it became real time and they were automatically linked. And the one thing I want to stress is that if employers will attach their agents or link their agents, then it doesn't create a workflow. However, if we want to add an agent or add a work agent authorization, through the agent portal and the agent does it, they will have to then add um, authorization form and then that will have to go through a review and have a workflow. And I'm just gonna so if I wanted to add add an employer. If I want to add an employer, I click add employer. You would put the employer ID, their FEIN, and you would choose the authorization type, whether it's an agent authorization or a power of attorney. You would select the file, meaning you would select the current correct document, whether it's an agent authorization. We have the agent authorization form available. There's a hyperlink. And if it's a power of attorney, you would um upload the completed power of attorney form, which we also have a hyperlink, and hit save. And you would have to also click the confirmation box and hit save. Either one of those will go to a workflow where staff will review. Once reviewed and approved, then you will have access to that employer's account. Now, one of the things I would like to show is an employer lookup. I want to show you what agents see when they have access to an employer's um, employer screen. Employer lookup gives you all types of options how to look up an employer. You can look them up by the employer ID, the FEIN, name. You can do a search for all your clients within a certain city. You can choose, well, I want them all in a certain city that are active. You have phone number. There's just so many multiple ways to look up your clients. But if we put in a client that we created earlier or I created earlier, do a search, it'll bring up that the search criteria which since we put in the one employer ID, it only bring up the one. If I click the employer ID hyperlink, it actually opens the employer homepage. 
Now, based upon the roles that were approved by the employer is what this um, agent will have access to. But if you see, they see the same thing that the employer sees for the roles that they have. And if you notice to the right, I mean, to the left, under options, they don't have all the options because we didn't give them all of the roles. But they can go in and do the same thing based upon their roles that an employer can do. So I did want you to see that on the agent um, portal and see how they have access. And just to let you know, staff have access to your portals also. So when you you reach out to the employer call center and say, you know, I'm having problems. We can look and see the same page that you're looking at. So we can click choose a certain employer or a certain agent and look at their screens. Okay. And I'm just gonna do a brief overview, overview. Um, probably finish up a little bit early, but they have some of the same options to the left, they have wage submission. They can submit wages, download wage file specifications, validate wage files. And let me talk about that. Validating a wage files, checking that wage file for any errors before you submit it. A summary of your file submission. Have the wage debt summary, just like I had before. And you can put an employer account number as long as you have those roles and you can see the same thing that the employer could see on their screen. You can make payments. You can see the history, payment confirmation lookup. Again, an, an agent has an account maintenance. Under the account maintenance, again, they can maintain their authorizations. And you can also maintain your account. So again, no different than employer, you click on mailing or physical or any hyperlink that's there and you can make a change. If you make a change, it shows a history hyperlink and you can look to see what, he, what was changed. And it'll tell you who it was modified by. You have your contact information. You can add another contact. You can click the hyperlink to see the current contact. You have your business information, the na legal name, trade name, FEIN. This is where an agent, if they had made a mistake and needed to update their FEIN, they would do that right here. Now understand that there's certain, certain things that you do, like a name change, FEIN name change, um, FEIN number changes, they do create workflows that have to be verified by staff and approved. Um, communication preferences, and again, you can see the activities that occurred on this account. Again, you have documents, my correspondence, different reports that you can choose, download center and your inquiry. And one of the things I did want to say is I didn't mention, but on the employer side, you can inactivate your account. And I'll, I'll log back in and show that real quick. Under account maintenance, you can see that there are some other options um, I didn't mention were 
inactivate account, if you are no longer going to be in business for whatever reason, you can choose a reason to inactivate your account and valid reasons are listed that an employer can choose and you will choose who the contact person is and fill out the information. And sometimes it'll automatically inactivate, but depending on the reason for inactivation, it may create a workflow. You can request seasonal determinations if you are a seasonal employer. You can also request, and this is for agents to look at too, if they have access to the employer account. If you have a business transfer, meaning if you sold your business, um, if you sold part of your business, if you purchase part of a business or a whole business, you can report that information here and you can also see a history of it. And at the bottom, I want to mention, you can request if some employers have to go back and they have to get a copy of their IRS 940 certification, they can see a history of it. Or if they have to request one, that's at the bottom also. So I've given you a broad, a very broad overview of some of the most important and prominent features that you'll be using. So at this time, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to go ahead a er little early and open it up to see what questions we have. So any question? Let me see. If anyone has any questions, if they'll put them in the question and answer um, box at the bottom of the screen, you'll ha have a Q&A. And if you'll click on that, you can type it. We, we do have a question. The question is, can you pull actual tax rate notices or just view the tax rate? If tax rate notices were created, what? Once tax rate notices are created, you can go to the um, correspondence and see any correspondence that were submitted or mailed. So you can see two things. You can see the actual correspondence or you can just see the, um, the link that lists them. And I know a lot of times employers, if they have um, different agents representing them, they want a copy of that. And so you can pull a copy of that to provide to your agent. Again, I'm opening up. We'll, we're finishing a little early, but I want to open it up to any question, make sure no one misses any questions. We have a question. What do you do if the primary person has left employment and you cannot access the account now? What you would do is reach out to our employer call center and they can help you with that. If you if you have someone that's a login, they maybe they were the administrator and they're no longer with the business, we can take care of that. Okay, my quarterly tax for my household employee is 87 cents. So if it's 80 cents, less than $5, we don't go after collections. Any other questions? Do you need to file? If you have a thousand dollars or more in a quarter, you are required to file. If you're currently a liable employer, you need to be filing. If you find that you're no longer liable, then you can 
check our, our law section. I don't want to get into it right now because I don't have my law book open to that page. But if you're no longer liable and meeting the requirements of $1,000 a quarter for a household, then you can request that you are no longer a liable employer. And you have to do that before the end of the year. And I think it's it might be, yes, household employers can pay one time annually. You can request that you are an annual filer. Other questions? If you're not, well, once we go live, if you reach out to the employer call center, we can get you switched over for the next year. And what, what he was asking about is being a household employer. Household employers have the option of filing quarterly or yearly. And if, you're, if you have household employment and you set up an account with us, in the new NC suit system, you have the option to choose that when you register. You're welcome. Other questions? Again, I do want to say, if you do have someone that files on your behalf, make sure that they are aware of your um, the file specs. And again, they are on our web page at ds.nc.gov forward slash nc suits. And I think you're asking, how do I do? Let me look at the previous. When once we go live with your household questions, if you to get you quick switched up annually, if you will just reach out to us, we will get you. Um, we we'll get you set up annually. I'm gonna give it a couple more qu uh, minutes. We're finishing up about 30 minutes early, but I want to um, give others time. Okay. I want to thank everyone for attending the NC Suits Modernizing Unemployment Tax Administration for North Carolina Employers Webinar. I hope that you found today's content valuable. Thank you for being with us today. And most importantly, be well and be safe. And I think I have one more question pop up. Yes, submit wage reports is your quarterly tax wage and wage reports. The NCUI 101. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad I'm glad to give the information. I look I'm excited for you to have an opportunity to start using our new program. If there's no more questions. We'll go ahead and give you 30 minutes back. Thank you all so much. Thank you.